In this video, I'm gonna show you how to slow down smoothly and safely whilst traveling downhill. I already have videos on hill starts and moving slowly uphill, links in the description to those videos. Most learners struggle when it comes to slowing down downhill, and that's simply because they usually brake too hard or even the car starts speeding up when they wanna be slowing down, and that's not gonna help their confidence. The two main issues are normally when to start braking and when to press the clutch down. Now, at some point, most of my learners go through a phase of pressing the clutch down straight away whenever they wanna start braking. I think they do it because they know if they need to stop, they'll have to press the clutch down to prevent the car stalling. So they think, well, why not get the clutch down straight away? Then I won't have to worry about it later. There are three main reasons why you don't wanna press the clutch down straight away whenever you're thinking about slowing down. The first reason is the clutch will speed up a little bit first before you manage to get to the brake. So I'm downhill now doing 18 miles an hour, clutch down before I brake and the car actually speeds up to 21 there before I've managed to get to the brake and start slowing it down again. It's also much harder to modulate your braking when your clutch is down. And what I mean by modulate is to keep a steady brake and add a little bit more or take a little bit away. Because when your clutch is up, you get what's known as engine braking, which is really helpful and I need to make a separate video on that. But engine braking helps the car slow down, helps it stay at a more steady speed, which means it's much easier for you to use a bit of brake to help you slow down. If your clutch is down, you're solely relying on your brake for slowing down. And if you come off the brake, you're gonna speed up again, which makes the brake more sensitive to use and therefore a lot harder. If you're an experienced driver, you'll struggle to understand this, but new drivers really struggle to brake smoothly when their clutch is down. And if you press the clutch down when you don't need to, let's say you don't actually go slow enough to need the clutch down, but you press the clutch down anyway, it creates more work. For example, I can do this bend in second gear. I'm gonna press the clutch down first, then brake. I'm already in second gear. Now I've got to bring the clutch up again to go around the bend. I could have just used the brake. Really good reason to only wait, or should I say only press the clutch down when you actually need to. Don't press it straight away every time you brake. It's also a problem with hazards. There's a car up ahead. Now, if I need to slow down for that, I can just brake first and I may not need the clutch. On this occasion, I do, because I need to go slow enough to wait for this oncoming Mini. But if I didn't need to press the clutch down, I could have just got away with braking and then using the gas again. Much easier, and you'll find quite often you don't need to press the clutch down and change gear for hazards. You do just need to slow down a little bit and then carry on accelerating again. So when should you get the clutch down? Well, when the revs are near 1,000 RPM. If you look here, you can see the revs are above 1,000 RPM. I know it says 10, but it's times 100, so it actually means 1,000. They just do it to make it look a bit more neat. I'd actually rather them put just one, two, three. I don't know why they do 10. I think it's for the Feng Shui, so it matches up with the 10, 20, and 30. Well, it doesn't even have 30 on this side. Doesn't match at all. Useless. Don't know why they do that, but that's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, etc. Now, <clears throat> when it gets down to 1,000 RPM, that's when you want to press the clutch down. I need to make a separate video on when to press the clutch down because I think that deserves a video in itself, but let's leave it at that for now. Clutch down at 1,000 RPM. So they're the problems most learners have when they're learning how to slow down downhill. Here are some tips. The first tip is make sure you come off the gas early and see what happens before you add brake. Don't just go straight on the brake because you'll probably overdo it. You want to come off the gas first and see how much does the car slow down and then add brake as you think you need to. The second tip, cover the brake pedal at all times when you are slowing down downhill. Don't come off the brake pedal until you actually want to accelerate again. And the third tip is make sure you look at just before where you want to stop. Focus completely on where you're trying to stop and that'll help you judge how much brake to add. If you keep looking around, looking in your mirrors and looking right at the roundabout to see who's coming earlier than you need to, you're not gonna be focusing on slowing down and you'll either slow down too much or too little. So here's an example of me trying to slow down downhill. I'm gonna come off the gas really early and cover the brake. I'm focusing on where I wanna slow down. Now I'm gonna start adding brake to try and feel like I'll be stopping by the point where I wanna stop by. Clutch down when the revs are near a thousand and continue to use the brake. I'm gonna keep covering the brake until I wanna go now. I get first gear so I'm ready to go. I can't see the right at the moment. Now I can see the right, no one's coming. Off the brake, starts rolling and add gas and lift the clutch to continue. 
very important that I did not come fully off the brake until it was actually time to go. This is how I slow down if I think I'll be able to continue in second gear. Off the gas and cover the brake again. Focus on where I want to be slow by and start using the brake to slow down by that point. At the same time as braking, get second gear and bring the clutch back up so I'm ready to go. And now no one's coming, I can actually go and I didn't have to stop. I just needed to go down the second gear and continue as I did. Most learners struggle to brake and change down a gear at the same time. What they normally do is when they press the clutch down to change down a gear, they come off the brake, which means they start speeding up down the hill again. So you really wanna try and practice holding the brake steady and changing down into second gear. I normally get my customers to practice this somewhere quiet and that helps them approach junctions that they can do in second gear. Most learners make the mistake of coming off the brake and covering the gas when they've finished slowing down downhill. That can cause a problem because when you come off the brake, the car starts to speed up again and you probably don't actually want to speed up. You just don't want to slow down anymore. So what happens is because the car speeds up, they panic, their foot's all the way over the gas pedal. So they have to quickly move the foot from the gas to the brake and overdo the brakes and brake harshly. So keep your foot covered over that brake until you want to accelerate again. To move away downhill, simply make sure in first gear with the clutch down, come off the brake pedal, the car starts moving, lift the clutch to the bite point. Once you're at the bite point, hold it there and you can add some gas and come off the clutch after a couple of seconds. You don't need the gas downhill because the hill acts as the gas and gives you power to help you down the hill. It's very important not to let the car move too quickly with the clutch down when you're going downhill. I'll show you why. So clutch down into first gear, handbrake off, my foot's on the foot brake. No one's coming, I'll come off the foot brake, the car starts rolling. Now it's rolling quite slowly, but if I lift the clutch down and let it get faster and faster, I haven't got control of my speed. If I press the gas now, the car doesn't go any faster. And I'm solely relying on the brake to keep me slow as I haven't got any engine braking. Again, another video on engine braking later. So I will actually overheat the brakes if I'm in a hilly area. Also, when I bring the clutch up, you get that big kick. So I recommend having the clutch at the bite point by five miles an hour when you're downhill. That'll prevent the kick. That'll prevent you overheating the brake and also it means you'll be able to come off the clutch fully after a couple of seconds and start using the gas to control your speed again, giving you engine braking and engine accelerating. You can actually also move away in second gear when going downhill. This can be helpful because it saves you changing the second gear later, but don't do it if there's traffic in front of you and you're gonna go slowly. Only do it if you can actually pick up some speed. For example, clutch down into second gear, foot on the brake and handbrake off, and I don't need first gear because the hill is gonna help me go. I don't need the extra torque or pulling power of first gear. So I won't have to do another gear change later. It's gonna be a lot easier. I'm just gonna wait for this van to go past. Van's gone past now. Check the blind spot, no one coming. Off the brake, it starts moving. Clutch to the bite point. And it's easy, it pulls the car along. A Little bit of gas to help it along even more. Clutch all the way off now, I'm doing 10 miles an hour already. Don't need a change in the second gear because I'm already in second gear and now I'll go into third gear. Don't you just love the British weather? It's never too hot, never really too cold, just plain miserable. If you're practicing without an instructor, make sure you have insurance. Get 20 pound off via the link in the description to Collingwood who provides specialist learner insurance that allows you to practice in a friend or family member's car without risking their no claims bonus. If you want to insure your own car, click on the link to confuse.com. I have found that they have the widest selection of cheap insurers for young drivers. Well, I hope that helps. Give me a thumbs up if you think it did help. Subscribe to get my future videos and I'll see you on the next one.